many of us that love canoeing oftentimes like to push the paddling season, whether it's at the beginning of the year when the ice goes out or at the tail end when things start to freeze up. As you can imagine, there are obvious risks, so it is important to not only have paddling skills, but to have a clear understanding of conditions and situations you can quickly get caught up in. And one of them involves having appropriate protective gear, such as a dry suit. So here's a brief explanation of why I wear a dry suit in the shoulder season. Okay, so it is time to get dressed. I'm going to get out of my, uh, my camp clothes and don the dry suit. Now, people may ask, why am I wearing a dry suit? Well, back in the days, I had no choice. I didn't have a dry suit. And I used to do late season tripping all the way to December uh, sometimes depending on the weather and of course the big thing is cold water immersion uh, especially when you're doing solo trips um, whether you're doing solo trips it doesn't matter whether you're in groups it's always a danger and uh, especially with the air temperature also close to freezing sometimes below freezing um, if you fall into the water and you're wet um, you really need to get out and warm up and get into dry clothes soon or else you can experience hypothermia and I think that's pretty obvious so over the years, uh, I've gathered different types of, types of equipment and gear. Um, dry suits are not cheap, and, but uh, because I've gotten into whitewater canoeing, those were a necessary part of my kit. So when I, see, uh, when I trip late in the season, and I know that I'm on a river, and I know there's moving water, there's falls, there's rapids, there are things like that, I always want to take the extra precaution, especially now that I'm tripping solo. And this is like at the end of October. The temperature right now is probably just a little over freezing. So <clears throat> while I'm at camp, I'll have my pants, my regular boots, my, my jacket. But when I'm on the trail or when I'm on the water, I like to wear a dry suit. And uh, I have it right here in the bag. And this is a uh, coca uh, Now this dry suit, I don't know the name of it, it's been a few years since I've bought it, but it's not considered a full dry suit in the sense that if I took this kayaking and I was doing rolls and things like that, or if I stayed underwater for any period of time, there could be some entry of water in the neck. And this is because this is a neoprene neck with a, a shock cord lock. So this is a lot more comfortable than uh, uh, what do you call a latex gasket. The latex gaskets are still on the wrist and this is what prevents water from getting into the suit. And a normal dry suit would have that gasket, that latex gasket around your neck so that if you're in the water for any period of time no water would get in. Now this is this dry suit is pretty much uh, the same as a regular dry suit. Like I said the only difference is the neck and this is why um, I prefer this one. This is a lighter material. It's uh, not as heavy duty as the full dry suit and it's also more comfortable because you're not constricted in your neck. So I like using this for canoeing a lot, especially for trips that are not involved uh, where high risk uh, immersion type uh, of uh, type of trip. Now granted I have dumped in this suit. Um, most times when you dump in the water you pop up pretty quickly. So uh, I've, I've been underwater and have not had water get in. So this is what I'll be using today. I'm going to strip off my regular clothing, don't need my down jacket. Now what I normally wear is I will wear a couple layers underneath the dry suit. Uh, so for my top I've got uh, a liner shirt, synthetic liner shirt, and then I've got a thin synthetic uh, sweater. And that will suffice for this temperature. I will also be wearing a life jacket and that will also provide additional warmth in the, in the core area, so which is good. <clears throat> um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these boots, these rubber boots I wear at camp. I'll slide them off and I'll use them to step on. Quite often if, if I don't have boots or something, I'll have something else to keep my feet on because right now the ground is moist and wet, so I'll put that there. Make sure there's nothing in the pants. The pants I'll take off. Don't worry. We got something underneath the pants. It's not a strip show. So 
I've got a pair of tights underneath. And these are what I wear underneath um, the Gore-Tex, uh, sorry, this is what, what I wear in the, the dry suit. Um, of course, you can wear varying thickness depending on how cold you get. Some people, sometimes some people even just wear their pants in the dry suit. I don't particularly like it because it's got all the, you know, you got the belt, you got buttons and things like that. So I prefer not to. And my sock, I've got two layers of sock just for warmth because my feet tend to get colder faster. So just like that, I'll unzip the dry suit and away I go. So slip right into it. One foot, and then the next one. There we go. Slip that on there. Now this one, some of the higher end dry suits will have a nice little, um, kind of like a belt, but just to hold the dry suit from slipping down. This one I only have shock cord. So I'll just do that and I'll just hold it around my wrist my wrist around my waist. I've also got a, a, a P-zip so that if I need to go to the washroom I can unzip this and get access. Uh, women's dry suits I will have a back access uh, which is good not only for peeing but also for doing number two, pooping. So for us guys unfortunately you'd have to take the dry suit off. Okay, I'll slip my arms in. And then slide my hand through the cold latex. There we go. There we go. I don't think I opened the zipper all the way. Uh, I don't think it's tight. Yeah. Let's see if I can get that in. Funny how just even an inch of the zipper close makes uh, getting into the dry suit more difficult. All right, I'll slip my ar second arm through. There we go. And then I'll slip the. So I got to take off my hat. And unfortunately, I'm going to take off this mic. I'm probably going to hear a lot of noise. So just give me a second here. And quick and easy, slip my uh, head through the neoprene neck. So I'll clip this mic on here. Hopefully this sounds okay. I might have rustled it. Mm. Let me uh, zip this close. Click down to the bottom, and then now I'm fully sealed. The neck also has shock cord, I can, which I can cinch down, but I'm not going to bother right now because I'm not going to be in the water for a few minutes now. And that's pretty much it. So, in terms of footwear, I have these neoprene booties from Mech. Um, again, I don't know the names of these. This is a while since I've bought them. But, one important thing, I've got to get my orthotics. I have flat feet, and without these things, I'll be in so much pain. So we'll put that in there. Oh yeah, I gotta cinch down the ankle. And then I'll just slip my foot in, and boom, I'm done. At least this foot. Put the strap on the ankle, strap on the calf. And these neoprene boots are much warmer than having regular boots on. Uh, they're also waterproof, so that I can go into water you know, easily, you know, uh, one and a half uh, feet uh, deep. And, I could, and you know, if I have any water that's one and a half feet deep, I should be able to paddle without having to water, uh, walk in the water. And so I should be able to keep dry pretty much most of the time. So this is great. So when I'm doing a late season trip, 
I'm protected not only from immersion, but I'm also protected from keeping uh, getting my feet wet for the most part. Now, there are times when I've been wading in water and uh, you slip into a hole thinking that it's shallow and I have passed the rim of my boot and water have filled, into the, filled in the boot. So that kind of sucks, but just pull it off, pour out the water and you keep going. More importantly, your feet will still stay dry because you're wearing a dry suit. There we go, calf strap on, ankle strap. There you go, I'm ready to go. And my hat, keep my head warm. That's it, good to go. This is only one aspect of canoeing safely in the shoulder season and only briefly covers the subject of a dry suit. If there is interest, I will cover more details on dry suits and their features in a future video. But for now, if you decide to push the canoe season, take care and do so safely.